In this lesson, we'll create a really basic version of Stack Edit. And for those who don't know, Stack Edit is an online markdown editor where you can edit markdown text and in real time see how that markdown is rendered in a preview pane side by side. Our example app will essentially do the same. And while creating the app, I'll explain my thought process in detail, which can give you some clues about how you can approach a similar problem. This is our project folder that I opened in Visual Studio Code. And as you see, there is not much going on here right now, but it will change soon. So what do I need to test a web application? I'll probably need a web server that I need to run locally. It doesn't have to be something complicated, but it should at least be able to serve HTML files, CSS files, and other static assets. And when I search for HTTP server on the internet, the first match that I see is this npm package. So I go to that packages page and it looks like it's popular enough with almost 8,000 stars and around 200 followers. So it's worth giving it a go. And the worst that could happen is if it doesn't work for me, I can search for another HTTP server and try that one. So to install the HTTP server, I need to run this npm command. So I copy it and run it in my terminal. And now I have an HTTP server binary installed in my system. If you read the documentation of this HTTP server, you'll see that it needs a public folder that we'll put our HTML files and other static assets into. So I'll create a public folder inside my project folder, and I'll put an index.html inside the public folder. But how do I code the index.html? Is there a template that I can start with? And luckily, I have this HTML shortcut in Visual Studio Code that fills in a boilerplate HTML code as soon as I type bang HTML and tap enter. And this HTML file refers to two other files. One of them is this main.js and the other is this main.css. So let us create two blank files for those by touch public main.js and touch public main.css. And in the body, I'll just write hello world and then start the server by running HTTP server on the console. And after I start the server, when I visit localhost 8080, I can see the web page that we just created. So yay, that was our first HTML markup. So I'll go back to my editor, I'll cut this script tag from the head section and move it all the way down to just before this closing body tag to make our lives a little easier. And then I'll give our application a proper title. I'll create a link to a favorite icon in the head, which is this tiny image that you see on the tab or when you bookmark a page in your bookmarks as an icon. And then I search the internet for how I can normalize cross-browser rendering differences using CSS because browsers change and the HTML standards change. So a typical CSS reset that you used to use before might have become outdated. So it's always worthwhile to do a search to see what's new. And luckily, I find this normalize.css as my first hit. And again, after looking at this project and its contributors and its overall traffic around it, I get a feeling that it's a production-ready CSS reset file that I can use. And to install it to my project, I do a yarn at normalize.css, which will copy the recent version of the normalize.css file to my node modules folder. And since I'm not using any builder or any kind of bundler for the sake of keeping this example simpler, I'll just copy this normalized CSS from node modules to our public folder. And here's how the file looks like. It's nothing too fancy. It's just a bunch of CSS reset rules to align the look and feel of your application across different browsers. And then similar to this main.css, I link normalize.css in our index.html file as well. Then I go to this main CSS. I'll just define a bunch of really basic styling rules. This 100% height on body and HTML will help us to span our editor across the entire browser viewport vertically, as we'll see real soon. Now, if you remember, Stack Edit had two main components. On the left hand side, there was the Markdown Editor, and on the right hand side, there was the Preview area. And to mimic that, I'll create a wrapper div and give it an arbitrary class name like main content. And since I'll need to type stuff in the editor, I'll use a text area for the editor and I'll use just a single div for the preview section. 
I'm sure with some CSS it should be easy to move them to where they need to go. So we'll assign a flex layout to the main content and set its height to 100%, which will make it span the entire viewport vertically. Then for its children, we'll set flex to 1, which will distribute them evenly side by side on the page. Then I'll assign some background color to this preview area to visually distinguish it from the editor text area. And I'll add some extra styling to the text editor as well. And when I refresh the page, this is how it looks like. Well, that's not bad for a starter, I think. So we can go back to our editor and proceed with coding. Now, what do I need to do? I need to read this markdown text, transform it to HTML, and render that HTML inside this preview area. And for that, I'll need to use some JavaScript naturally. So I'll go to this main.js file. First, since I'll be reading from this text editor and writing to this preview area, I need variables that hold references to them. And to get references to those DOM elements, we can use the document query selector API. So I'll create two variables that point to the text editor and the preview area respectively. And when I log them in the console and then switch back to my browser, and look at the console in the developer tools of my browser, I can see that they are pointing to the correct parts of the page, so it's good. Since we verified that these two variables point to the appropriate DOM nodes, I can now remove these two log lines. Now let's think about what we need to do again. We want to create a visual rendering or a visual preview of the markdown text that we entered to the editor on the left into the display area on the right. So whenever we type something, the rendering of the display area on the right will change. And we want to do this whenever we type something new. So in a sense, we want to get notified whenever the user types a key, and then we want to act upon it and update the rendering on the preview area. In JavaScript for DOM elements, such as this text area, you can do this kind of a notification handling by adding an event listener to the DOM node. And adding an event listener is fairly straightforward as well. You just do a reference to the DOM node that we want to listen to, dot add event listener, and then you provide the type of the event. And since we want to be notified whenever the user types a key, our event will be key up. And after that, as the next parameter, you pass an anonymous function. And that function is called the event handler. And it will be executed whenever the user types a key and this key up event is triggered. So when the user presses a key, a certain sequence of events are fired, and there are minor details across browsers, but the general order is key down, key press, key up. So when this key up event is fired, we'll observe it here. For now, we'll just log the key code of our event, and the key code is a numeric value that indicates which character that the user has pressed. So let's refresh our page and give it a go. And yes, when I type, the event handler logs the key code of the key that I pressed to the console. That works fine, so let's go back to code again. What else do we want to do? We want to parse this markdown text and turn it into HTML. And luckily, getting the value of this text box is not that hard. You can just destructure the value out of the target attribute of this event object that the event handler passes to our callback function here. So let's log the value and try it again. But before that, allow me to pause and talk about the approach that I've been taking so far while solving this problem, which you can generalize to any kind of technical problem. So as you see, I'm going gradually or incrementally. What do I mean by that? I'm first making an assumption or forming a hypothesis, and then I'm writing some code to validate my assumption. And if I see that things are working well and they are working as expected, then perfect, I go to the next step and form another hypothesis. And if things don't go so well, I'll make a different assumption, update my code, and rinse and repeat until I'm satisfied with the solution. So unlike what you see in the Hollywood movies, coding is not the act of punching the keyboard like a mad monkey until you get the desired output. Quite the contrary, coding is a slow and gradual process. And if you are new to this, or if you are just learning to code, that's the first thing that you need to learn. You need to learn to slow down, and you need to learn to stop and think before you act. Anyways, enough pep talk, let's go back to code again. 
When I test my changes, I see that the value of the text box is printed in the console every time I print something new, which shows that our code is working fine so far. Now what else do I need? I need to convert my markdown to HTML. And how do I do it? Honestly, I don't know. This is the second thing that you need to learn while programming. When you don't know something, you search, because your brain can hold only so much. Searching for solutions and asking for help from the developer community does not make you an inferior programmer. Quite the contrary, asking for help when you need and helping others when you can makes you a great programmer. So don't be afraid to ask questions. So when I search for a markdown converter, I see this showdown link. And when I visit its source code repository on GitHub, I see that it's pretty well supported and it has lots of watchers and forks. It's stunningly well documented. So overall, it looks like a solid project. So I think we can give it a go. So let's install showdown by doing a yarn at showdown, which will again install the code inside my node modules folder. And since I don't want to complicate this example by configuring a bundler, I'll just copy the code from my node modules folder to the public folder with this command again. Are we done? Well, not quite. We also need to add a reference to showdown.js in our index.html file, like this. From the showdown's documentation, converting markdown to HTML looks pretty straightforward. We just create a new converter and pass the text to be converted through that converter. So let's do that. Const converter new showdown.converter. Converter make HTML value, which will assign it to this HTML variable. Let's log the HTML for now and see what we get. Or actually, I'll directly change the inner HTML of this preview component. That will be easier to validate, I think. And voila, it's working. When I type markdown code, I see its preview on the right. But the problem is when I refresh the page, my text is gone. So how can I preserve it? Well, you can Google it, but one of the ways to do it is to use window local storage API. So we'll try it in this example, but also keep in mind that local storage is not the only solution to it. You can use something like IndexedDB, or you can use a remote API to store your markdown. And there are other options too. And that as a developer will be something that you face regularly. You'll find more than one way to do things, and you'll constantly have to do constraint optimization. What I mean by that, you'll need to pick the best solution based on the constraints you have, based on your time available, the simplicity of the solution, the reliability of the solution, your budget, your needs, how easy it is for the solution to adapt to future changes, and lots of other things. Some of those things will be under your control, and certain things will be out of your control. But as a rule of thumb, everything being equal, and it never is, choose the simplest solution that suits your needs. Well, in our case, using the local storage API just takes a couple of lines of code. It's a well-supported API that all modern browsers provide. It is reasonably fast, so there is no harm in trying that. When I get the value from the text box, I'll store it in the local storage like this, and it will work for us. And as a side note, this setup is not ideal because we save the value of the local storage and we also update the inner HTML of the preview area on every key press. And as an exercise for the interested, you might want to optimize this by using request animation frame or some functional construct like debouncing the key press handling to a time when the user is idle and not typing anything. I'll provide a solution to this in the lesson notes. But as always, first try to implement it on your own. And for starters, maybe searching the web for debouncing or debouncing keyboard events will give you enough head start or enough information to move forward. And one more thing, when the window first loads, the text area will load a default text. So if we already have markdown in the local storage stored, the value inside the text area will be stale. So I'll update the text area's value with what we have in the local storage, and then I'll extract this render logic to its own render preview function. And down below, when the script first loads, if we have a markdown stored in the local storage, I'll call render preview with the stored markdown 
to update the preview and that will give you a minimal albeit fully functioning markdown editor that you can use for your needs and as a homework for instance you can take this code and think about other ways to enhance it like for example what can you do to do some minimal formatting on the editor area or what additional functionality you can add to make it more useful but for the sake of this use case that's all about it so see you in the next lesson